So today um, I'm talking about a different topic, which is high-speed SNC. It's quite topical now with um, HS2 being built, and more importantly, of course, HS1 moving towards um, renewals and heavy maintenance. So this is a picture of um, HS1 yesterday. We are being battered by the beast of um, the East. We have a speed on since Tuesday, um, and it's on till tomorrow. It's 160 kilometers per hour, which is 100 miles uh, per hour for you. In high speed, well, it's all kilometers per hour. Okay. So what is a high speed turnout? It's similar to a low speed normal turnout. It has a uh, switch, intermediate part, and a crossing nose. The difference is the crossing nose. So what is exactly the definition of high speed turnout? I've been asking people around yesterday, and the answer that I get is the turnout speed of 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour. Is that the only definition? So um, that was what I thought before I joined High Speed One, until my uh, signaling counterpart corrected me. <laughs> Actually, High Speed SNC can be very short, but as long as it's on the through route of a high speed line, it's a high speed SNC. Okay, so the switch that you can see on your right is actually a short switch at Stratford. That's yesterday as well. So. Um, <laughs> You can see that it's a swing nose crossing, but it's quite short. We have one in 12 crossings swing nose on, at Stratford. So to us, HS1, we classify 230 kilometers per hour as high speed on our through route. So anything with that speed and above, we have swing noses. So we have about um, 66 swing noses in our, our little network of 109 kilometer. So um, <clears throat> for China, they class it differently. Their through route is 250 kilometers per hour at high speed. So the TSI, I believe, uh, requires swing noses at 280 kilometers per hour or above. So what is the requirement um, for a high speed SNC? Safety. So that crossing switch system must be tested with real vehicles and un undergo long-term running tests. And passenger comfort is a key thing. It must be designed in line with vehicle track interaction theories and analysis. Basically, it's vehicle dynamics. And um, you need to have minimum maintenance because maintenance is only done at night on a very, very small window. So, um, and high reliability. So we need very high precision engineering for the system component and the electrical equipment. So my, my counterpart, the head of signaling, Eric Eloir, proudly told me that, do you know that our M, uh, mean time between failures of our POE is actually 40 years? So, wow. <laughs> this is unheard of at Network Row. <clears throat> okay, so. Technical aspects of high-speed turnouts in the UK, which is HS1, actually. So um, <clears throat> we use tangential or non-intersecting geometries, and our railhead are inclined at 1 in 20 in all the turnouts. We only use glued insulated joints in the turnout routes only, so none on high-speed lines, and we use swing nose crossings. We have locking devices for the switches and the movable crossings. This is a must. And the control of the opening and closing of the switch rail and the wing, uh, swing nose has a switch position detector. And most importantly, the electrical e equipment for heating switches and swing nose crossing, which is now essential now with the weather there at the moment. So this is the switch rail profile that we're talking about. So the, the one on the left is a um, SEN 60E1A1, which is used by uh, BWG, the German um, manufacturers. Where else in um, our network, we have Voslo, Codifer, um switches and crossings. They use this UIC60 section, which is rolled with a one in 20 <coughs> uh, angle and the gauge shoulder. So it's as rolled. 
Okay, so the other key thing about high-speed SNC is the positioning of these units. They must be on straight track. So all our high-speed SNCs are on straight track in, um, in HS1. And they have flat or constant um, gradient. If you look at the um, photo on the top right, that's a similar flexure. We don't have it in high-speed line. And if you look at the second one at the bottom, I think somebody, uh, some of you might recognize it. It's Canal Street Tunnel, where the gradient is one in three and a half percent, three and a half percent actually, so one in 67 or something like that. So it's NR60D switch there. So we don't have switches on very, very steep gradient. We also have constant support and track stiffness. Uh, we also need to control the settlement of earthworks because at high speed, the tolerance for maintaining the track geometry is very, very critical. I'll show you some maintenance um, tolerances afterwards. So, and also high speed SNC must be away from structures and bridges um, and at locations with relatively easy road access. So if you look at the bottom um, pictures, they might not be very clear, but this is a pain in HS1. This is um, a set of scissors in the ECML box. Do you know where it is? <laughs> it's just outside King's Cross, and uh, it's on floating slab track. And do you know that the, the scissors is partly on slab and partly on ballast? And we don't have a spare yet. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> so, OK, construction tolerances. So. I'm comparing the construction tolerances from network rail and the high speed one standards. You can see that the vertical alignment for new construction in network rail is plus 10, minus 20, but in HS1 it's five, plus minus five, and we maintain it to less than 10 mil. So your construction standard is actually our maintenance standard, and so on. <clears throat> okay. So problems with our SNC um, in the high-speed section, <coughs> the same problems. We have pitting. We have um, RCF issues, uh, mainly on the point rail, the crossing nose rail. So we have lipping on a crossing nose rail as well, ballast and ice pitting. Ice pitting we're facing now at the moment because of the heavy snow. So in terms of high-speed SNC, geometry is very important. Traditional method of designing um, geometry is based on kinematics. <coughs> so you just calculate the velocity, the acceleration, and assume that the train doesn't have any uh, suspension <coughs> effects and all that. And then you get a um, uncompensated lateral acceleration value or the maximum Kent efficiency. So do you know what's the difference between uncompensated uh, lateral acceleration and compensated lateral acceleration? <laughs> so uncompensated uh, lateral acceleration assumes that the train is a rigid body, it just moves like that. But if it's compensated, it means that uh, when you're rolling outwards, it's actually rolling outwards, and then the, the cant is actually smaller than what it should be because you are doing that way and the canter is reduced due to the vehicle suspension. <laughs> yeah, if it's cant deficiency, not equivalent cant. Thank you. So, um, so what they do with um, the calculations using kinematics um, 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 analysis is they calculate the rate of change of can deficiency, some approximation for the jerk. Okay, so when they do the calculations for the jerk, they use different wheelbase uh, bogey spacing. In in the UK, we use 12.2. That's the uh, Mark One um, wheel space uh, bogey spacing. But in France, we use 19 meters, and in Germany, we use 17 meters. So it's, 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 there's a variety difference. Okay, so as Ian pointed out, there are different types of turnout geometry. So we have the intersecting geometry, um, the tangential in, uh, geometry, and a non-intersecting geometry. So um, the intersecting geometries are, as Ian pointed out, all the 
vertical switches and an R60 Mark II, as you said, the short ones. Voslo Cogifers as well, the French ones, one in nine and one in 12 are these intersecting or secant um, geometry. Tangential geometry are the ones that we use in, uh, in HS1. All the Voslo Cogifers are tangential geometry. So it provides better ride comfort due to the smaller entry angle. But we do have um, non-intersecting geometry with um, UK's NR60 Mark I suite and all the P BWG switches in Germany. Okay, so these uh, non-intersecting geometry uh, has the smallest entry angles. Okay, so with transitions, you always have um, like um, a change in the radius so that you can reduce the jerk and all that. So usually, it's done with a clothoid. So this is an equation of a clothoid. Steve, equations for you? <laughs> <laughs> so this is changing from a straight to um, a curve. So the radius changes with the distance. So the radius will go from infinity on straight and slowly reduces to the R value. Uh, proportional to the length, okay? So why am I saying this? Because BWG design philosophy uses double clothoid. So there's only two big um, high-speed manufacturers in the world. It's BWG and Voslo Cogifer. So BWG design has double clothoid. So it minimizes uh, jerk lateral acceleration. And they use this... Um, technique called kinematic gauge optimization to reduce the switch wear as well. And they have multiple point machines in the switch and movable crossings, just like the high drive. And then it's head hardened, so they don't use casting at, at all. They use head hardened rail steel for the cradle and the points of the movable crossing. So BWG Germany, this is a photo of their 200 kilometers per hour turnout, that's 125 miles per hour. So uh, this, uh, they are installed in Germany, Sweden, Italy, Spain, USA, Taiwan, Netherlands, South Korea, China, etc. have thousands of them in the world. They're very long, I can't see the crossing. <laughs> so uh, Voslo Kodjifers, um are used in HS1. Uh, they have tangential um, geometry, double radius, so, um, and they have can deficiencies of up to 100 mil for speeds of up to 160 kilometers per hour and lower can deficiency values of 85 mil for 160 and above. They use a manganese cast cr a steel cradle for the swing nose crossing. Okay. So Voslo Cogifer, this is an example of um, the very, very long uh, turnout. So I went to France and see this. Uh, it's one in 65. The turnout speed is 230. So it's about 140 um, miles per hour. So um, these are in, uh, Voslo Cogifers are installed in France, UK, Belgium, Spain, Italy. Sweden, Turkey, Korea, China, etc. So there are thousands of these as well <coughs> across the world. So, so what's the differences between all these geometries? You know, we know that they, they have an impact on the Kant deficiency and all that. So we compare three high-speed turnouts with the similar geometry. So we have the NR60H. We have the Voslo Cogifer uh, 1 in 46, which is used in our um, infrastructure. And then we have the BWG. So they're all 160 kilometers turnouts. But you can see that the switch radius are different, and the angles are different. So which one is the best? So we know recently that we had problems with the NR60H with right comfort issues at Searchlight Lane in Northern Bridge. The speed is uh, supposed to be 100 miles per hour, but now we're reducing the speed to, what, 90? Ian? Yeah. 90, because we have right comfort issues. So does it mean that um, we need to make sure that the CAN deficiency is low? Because comparing the three switches, 
NR60H has the highest CAN deficiency of 92 mil. So this is um, the drawing from BWG for this uh, particular switch. As you can see, they use acceleration and jerk values for their design. And then this is the Vosloh Codifer crossover. They use CAN deficiency and rate of change of CAN deficiency. It's so difficult to compare them because it's like comparing apple to pear. You know, they use different units. What does it mean? And then if you plot the different wheelbases, you know, 12.2, 7, not wheelbase, bogey spacings, 12.2, 17, 19, and you get different answers. And the worst answer is from 12.2. So are we being conservative using 12.2? Because the act... Well, there's nothing of that question, no one's <laughs> Yes, that's the, that's the question, yes. So, so it gives different answers. So, so what does this geometry analysis tell, tell us? That different methods and input parameters will give different answers. So what is the real answer? And how does the train behave? You know, uh, we know that the NR60 Mark I suite was rushed, uh, and then we didn't do any vehicle dynamics analysis with it. So we had problems with um, NR60 switch wear issue, and then now we have the right comfort issue with the H switch. So it is really, really important that we do vehicle dynamics analysis of the geometry, because it gives us um, assurance that the vehicle right quality is good, and it's also com uh, confirmed the compatibility of the rail profiles with the uh, geometry and the wheel profiles. I think the problem with the switch wear problem was that the wheel profile and the switch rail profile was not compatible. So while the optimal geometries can be um, derived with a specific vehicle, but we can do some generalizations from it. So this is a case study that we did a few years ago with Jeff South. Uh, I think that's six years ago. He asked me, okay, we want to design a new G switch. Can you compare it with our existing switches and tell me what's the performance like? So the new switch is G33, and we compare it with a GV switch, a vertical one, and an R60G. So this is what it looks like on the table. So on looking at it, so which one is the best? You know, the G33 is a variation of GV, but it's a tangential instead of a secant geometry. So it has a smaller entry angle of, of one in 475, so it should have a better right. The slight increase is the Kant deficiency, um, about five mil increase in Kant deficiency compared to the um, GV, but it's still less than the NR60G. So on paper like this, which one do you think would be which would have the best performance? It's difficult to say, isn't it? <laughs> so what we did is um, we took the geometry and then we run a vehicle dynamics analysis on the three geometries. So these are the geometries and you have, can see that um, the first two had the two leveling, so that's the Kent along the switch. So the analysis showed that actually the NR60G resulted in the worst lateral acceleration above the trailing, bo trailing bogey center, 25 meters into the switch. So this you can't see from the kinematic analysis. You need to run the dyna vehicle dynamics analysis because it's, it's a combination of the body motion of the train. It's the lateral mo movement of the train, it's the roll movement of the train, it's the yaw of the vehicle. Everything combined gives you a peak. So if you do the trailing direction movement, the worst case is actually the one that Jeff proposed, the G33. So it's, it's not good. It's hitting the limit of 1.5 um, meters per second square as it's exiting the, um, the toll. So it's not good. So this, these are the vehicle res resonance modes. You need to understand how the vehicle is, is um, experiencing. Hence, we have a two-second rule. 
That is to cover all the vehicle resonance modes that you can think of. Two seconds, the vehicle will damp out most of the modes. So back to the drawing board, Jeff came back with GS4. <laughs> so um, the only difference is that he extended the transition length and removing the two leveling. So it sort of reduced the uh, can't deficient, uh, the rate of change of can't deficiency. So we did the analysis again, and it was much better than G33. So yes, so the question is, what does the number tell you if you don't understand what the vehicle is doing? OK, that's it, my conclusion. <laughs> higher speeds lead to higher dynamic forces and vibrations on the infrastructure. So high speed SNC designs in particular need to be able to com accommodate these high dynamic forces while giving a good passenger comfort. Geometry design is important for high speed turnouts and different supply as we saw have different design philosophies and giving slightly different turnout geometries that sometimes we don't understand. And, and vehicle dynamics modeling is very important for optimizing turnout designs <coughs> for passenger for comfort and for maintenance and system reliability. <coughs> That's it. So the last picture is just a hybrid switch that we have in HS1. It's an RT60 switch with a French MCM91 uh, point machine, and it's working very well. Thank you. Thank you.